Trump. Let's get straight to Steve Leisman, who has more on the claims number today and, and what we can expect overall. Steve. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, the number 3.169 million, just to, a little bit of an aside here, it creates a quandary for us how to round this number. All the numbers to the right of the decimal were the normal numbers we'd report. Just add the three. So we're keeping it out as far as we want to, as we can go here. 3.169 million new claims. That is down a little bit higher than the estimate. 22.6 continuing claims. That data is a week older, uh, but it shows the percentage, uh, the, the people who are getting benefits now. Insured unemployment rate is the percentage of those who are eligible for unemployment in the nation who are receiving it. That's 15 and a half. And uh, we have a slightly different number from what Carl said because we count an extra week, 33.8 million. Uh, taking a look at the chart, you can see a pretty steady decline uh, in the number of claims, and yet it remains orders of magnitude higher than a normal week, which we would be 200 and say 250,000 jobless claims. Taking a look at the hardest hit by, uh, by state by the insured unemployment rate, Michigan again topping the list, followed by Vermont, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and Nevada, which has had a huge problem there with the closure of the casinos. Now, the states with the fewest claims, some of these are doing much better, Arizona, Utah, Wyoming, perhaps, than the rest of the nation. But look at Florida at 2%. We believe that's almost entirely a problem of them processing and paying claims with their uh, unemployment insurance system being a, really a national story. Um, I, I've seen some data that showed that just 43% of those who have filed have actually received claims or being paid claims in Florida. So they have a long way to go to actually uh, get up with the rest of the nation. They're 2% compared with 15.5% for the rest of the country. A lot going on here, guys. I think there's three economic things to think about. You have the wave of unemployment from the shutdown. You have an economic wave of people who are not making it, businesses are not making it. And then you're going to have another going back the other way, which is perhaps some of this decline happening from the reopening. Sarah? My question, Steve, is, you know, you've heard this anecdotally that because of the CARES Act and the, the, there's new generosity in terms of what people are getting for filing unemployment claims on, on unemployment, if, they, if they're getting more than they would typically make, how do we think about what the return jobs picture is going to look like, how fast it can come back and whether these jobs actually do come back? I think there's an argument that in some states, for a brief period of time, there will be an incentive for people to stay home. I believe these extra unemployment claims run through July, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. But it's only about half of the country where they'll be getting more than they made. But that's not going to be the thing that's going to determine if people are going to go back. Do people want to go back to work? Almost surely. Are people going to be afraid for their jobs in a situation where... Uh, there, there's going to be a lot of unemployed in, in, in the country. Um, so I think the wages may attenuate the length of it for some Americans. I think it's not going to be the biggest problem. The biggest problem is, are stores open? Do businesses open? Are states open? Do customers decide to go? That's the problem we'll have. And by the way, it may turn out that having these extended benefits through July may end up having been the right call to give more people the aid and the benefits that they need. Yeah, let's hope so, Steve. But I know you saw uh, Goldman's piece earlier in the week, Jan Hatzias, who, because the benefits are so robust this year, sees disposable personal income positive for 2020. That's not what we certainly were considering when this uh, pandemic first broke out. No, not through the, uh, through the channel. What, what's interesting about that is the extent to which that money is actually spent or is it saved. There's two factors here. One is that people don't really have an ability, perhaps, um, people who are still employed, of course, to spend as much as they did before. Those receiving benefits uh, obviously are having other uh, issues when it comes to their, their income. The other issue, Carl, is that when we go through a shock like this, savings rates tend to escalate and be up. We saw a massive savings rate of 13, 14 percent. The story is really not going to be the income story. The story is going to be how much of people's income do they feel secure and safe enough to part with. And one of the lasting things we'll be watching is do people feel like in, in the new world that converges on the other side of this, they want to go to bed at night with a bigger nest egg than they had before.